Hi, my name is Jason Uresko. I'm a senior engineer at Blizzard Entertainment. Uh, last year I gave a talk very quickly uh, about uh, game engine usage of new modern C++ features. And I had a, a macro-based reflection system which everyone hated. Uh, people were complaining about it on the YouTube channel and I got some okay. comments afterwards. I, I'm sorry, you get to start all over again? <laughs> Because nobody can hear you. You're screwing my role, man. I know. I know. Sorry. Hello? Hello? Oh. You might have to talk closer to that thing. I don't know. Maybe we can... All right, ladies. <laughs> Hold on to your panties. This is going to be really rough. <laughs> All right. So let's do this where everyone can hear it. Uh, so... Last year I gave a uh, talk about uh, game engine usage of uh, C++11 features and, and, the, and the like. Mainly I was focusing on stuff that was practically available at the time, which meant I was using a compiler that had some features from 14, some features from 11, uh, and no experimental features. So I built out an infrastructure that used a macro-based uh, system, reflection system, to uh, generate resources and to generate this, the, automatically generate the serializers and deserializers for that data. Uh, this caused me to have to go in and define some of the default types so then that they would be evaluated properly. Uh, and that created kind of a weird thing where, you know, I had to do this work when I probably shouldn't have. So now, with uh, the new compiler, 2017, I was able to go in and add type traits. Uh, and this allowed me to remove all of those macros and then make the code debuggable because I no longer had just magic macro and then data comes out. Uh, so now I had debuggable code. Well, as you can see, it is still a little bit tough to look at. Uh, I'm using essentially uh, an enable if to enable a template availability at compile time based on whether or not the type is considered trivially copyable. Uh, I had to kind of put this on multiple instances of my, my function uh, to get it to just compile and work. Well, I think that we can do better. And so now I have this. Using if const expert, I now just have a single function where the interface is the same, and I evaluate on based on the type which code is getting compiled. So that, that's pretty nice. So now I removed all my macros. That's awesome, right? Well, actually, I have to handle the case where I have something that in my resource that is not trivially copyable. Uh, for my resources, I allowed uh, standard vector, which typically isn't allowed in uh, game resources, but I'm trying to prove out some of the advancements in C++ for use in game engines and things like that. So to allow for that, uh, essentially I have this uh, macro evaluation that runs through and makes me less sad, uh, but essentially what it does is generates this. So I have this definition at the top, which is my resource uh, in a header file, and then when the macro is processed, it'll generate this templatized uh, override for the function, and it essentially enumerates each of the types. Uh, it will also go through and uh, specialize the serialized for each type, and if that type is a uh, trivially copyable type, then it will kind of automatically use my trivially copyable version of my serialize. Uh, so this is a lot easier to have kind of be the magic thing that exists in the macros, and the other stuff is much easier to debug. So that makes me happy. Uh, so another thing that I showed was a compile time usage of uh, string hashing. And what I had before, which was available then, was the uh, original version of uh, ConstExper, which meant that you couldn't do loops. And so I did recursion-based uh, string hashing. So this was the original layout, which isn't the easiest to debug because everything's in a uh, question mark colon type setup. Uh, this is the new layout, which is a lot easier to deal with because it's now in loops. I can step in and I can go through each item and check it and verify uh, when I'm doing the uh, evaluation at uh, runtime or uh, have, the, have, the, uh, have better knowledge on kind of what's going on when the compiler is running and running this code. So can I get rid of more macros? Because at one point I had this where it was kind of calling my context for function and then uh, it would just evaluate everything at compile time if I needed it to. Well, kind of, because we now have this, which came in in 2011, uh, but I found it later, so I started using that, which meant that I could now put this uh, user-defined literal at the end of my string, and that allowed me to go through and simplify a bunch of my code so then I didn't have macros all over the place and 
making everyone sad who looked at it. Thank you very much.